Hi, and welcome to Agate Fossil Bed National Monument in Northwest Nebraska. So behind me are Paleocaster Devil's Corkscrew fossils. Another name for Devil's Corkscrew is its formal name, Demo Neelix Trail. So what's happening here? When you see a kind of big blob that is being zoomed in on, that is the den. And I'd like you to imagine that that used to be the home to an ancient prairie dog-like organism. And then the corkscrews, which are the demonelix, they are the actual burrows that these animals used. And so the thought is, or currently scientific-wise, that this environment used to be a savanna like you would see in Africa, and that there were probably tall grasses out here, and these little guys burrowed into the ground as many prairie dogs do today, and this is some of their fossil remains. Not the only thing that's out here. I might also point out that you'll notice that there's some fragments of large pieces of rock that have fallen off the top, which is a cap rock. And as we travel through this national monument, I would indicate to you, be thinking about the law of lateral continuity. These rock beds match at different outcrops. Just parts of it have been eroded away and we're missing that. So our wonderful camera human is gonna turn around and face an outcrop where that has happened. And you will be able to see that the rock layer matches on both sides, except it's missing some cap rock at the top. So the two fine grained siltish materials that has silt, sand, and I might add volcanic ash, that matches on both sides. The reason that some of it is eroded in between is likely due to differential weathering. So we lost some cap rock, it's starting to weather away, and these two sides are still remains, but they're still the same rock layer. Hi. We're at the second stop of our Agate Fossil Bed National Monument. So, this is so cool. Take a look at that corkscrew looking fossil. Why is that so special? You just learned about Paleocaster, which is something like an ancient prairie dog or a prairie dog like animal, vertebrate. So, they would like prairie dog today pop up to the surface to do their running around and scavenging and hunting and eating. And then they would burrow into a den that was subsurface that they would uh, live in. So typically today, prairie dog farms, they have burrowed extensively between one den to another. So just thinking that the, the present is the key to the past, which is the law of uniformitarianism, we think that probably happened with these guys too. So when people first started seeing these fossils over a hundred years ago, like in the mid 1800s, <laughs> the first guy to really find this thing, they were baffled by what the heck are these? And that's, I guess their frustration led to the name of Devil's Corkscrew, which now means, or the formal name is Demon Elix. So Demon Elix <laughs> is how you say it. So more to come, we'll see you at the next stop. We are going to be looking at the several geologic formations that exist in the area of agate fossil beds. There are two primary geologic formations, the Harrison Formation and the Anderson Ranch Formation. So a geologic formation simply means rock layers that were laid down at a similar time and similar conditions. And the Harrison Formation actually contains windblown uh, ash from volcanic eruptions and sand. We can actually see some evidence of what looks like cross bedding there. You can also notice that there is some different looking material below it. That is the different formation, which is the Anderson Ranch. That is made up of lake deposits, ancient soils, and stream channel deposits and water holes. Between them is a gap of missing geologic time known as an unconformity. It's not a big one because you're looking at rock layers that are not very far apart in terms of geologic time. 
So a lot of the rocks that are out here are late Oligocene, so we're talking about somewhere around 22-ish million years ago to early Miocene, which was 23 million years ago. An important part of this landscape is the weathering and erosion that's occurred in the area from the Niobrara River, which has actually caused the landscape to be channeled out by ancient fluvial conditions. Another shot that you're seeing here are the two different dig locations kind of out for the distance there. Uh, there are two sites where primary amounts of the fossils for the agate fossil beds were extracted over time. There's a lot of Native American culture here as well that's really fascinating and interesting and there's some great exhibits. So this is a good look at the two different areas that are digging sites out in the distance. But I'm also showing you some bedrock, uh, cap rock, and how important that cap rock is to locking in the softer sediments below it that would weather away very quickly. So in short, the agate fossil beds, it's a super rich fossil bed of Cenozoic. We look at fossils, and some fossils have animals that are similar to today's animals. Others have gone extinct, so the big question is why. Species that can tolerate the changes in environment typically are the ones that survive. Either that or they migrate to a no, new location. The third alternative is to become extinct. The fossil record tells their stories. And that's why paleontologists study these organisms and the rocks in which we find fossils to understand how did plants and animals adapt over time? Did they not adapt and go extinct? And how have they changed? So we can kind of unlock the knowledge of what happened geologically speaking in the past and apply that to the current day. So you're looking at some very remarkable outcrops and you would say, well, what's so remarkable about them? That's why you gotta get in them, take a look at the fossils. I will tell you fossil collection is prohibited in a national park without uh, a permit and certainly vertebrate fossils are on any public land without a permit. So you can go enjoy them here at Agate Fossil Beds. More to come, see you at the next stop. Bye.